Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Right, here's another buzzer pattern. Now you notice some of these other ones we've tied, they're fairly similar. Um, mixing up color schemes, because if you ever look at the naturals, they are anywhere from black and olive, olive and silver, silver and black, black and red, silver and black, um, and it, kind of all the combinations in between. I've had times where they're taking silver and nothing else, or black and red and nothing else. So you have to have a good mixture of uh, colors. So this is one that I like that imitates one that's getting ready to just burst at the seams, pupating. And uh, as I do with most of my patterns, I'm going to start off with some breathers and start with a little bit of thread at the eye of the hook. And then we're going to come in with our McFly lawn. And just a little tiny bit, we'll push, push, uh, put this on or, uh, parallel with a couple of wraps. And then we'll just turn it and we can give a couple of figure eight wraps. And then I just like to work that to the very front because we won't do anything else in front of those breathers. But now I, what I like to do is just pull them forward. And now we can throw in a few wraps right behind those and it props them up and pushes them out. Just like the naturals. Plus it keeps it out of the way of the resin we're going to add at the end. And then in order to make the bead not quite so tight against those breathers, it gives us a tie-in point for our uh, other materials at the end here. You'll tie in a little bit of room with your thread. So just like that. And now if you pull your bead up against that thread bump, you can pull your thread now back against the bead. A few wraps and now that's going to be in place. And I'll go ahead and trim the breathers. Maybe a couple eye lengths. Okay. We'll work our way down. It's a pretty easy pattern to tie. Just a couple of materials in the body. So what we tie in first goes up last. <clears throat> so we're going to tie in our uh, holographic tinsel in silver. And this is the medium. It's important that we use this medium size because... It's going to create the segmentations the right, right width that we want. So tie that in right there at the end. A couple of clean wraps. Now what I'll do is I'll grab some holographic tinsel, the cranberry color, in a small. So this is a... And I use these spool tamers that we also sell on the website for all my tinsels and wires. You can see it keeps them nice and not in a rat's nest. Now I'm going to tie that right in front of the silver. Just like that. Now I'll create a taper. So what I'll do with the taper is I'm going to come from here all the way to the bead. Then I'm going to go back three quarters of the way to about right here. Then I'm going to go back to the front. Then I'm going to go halfway. Then I'm going to go back to the front, then I'm going to go quarter way, and then back and finish it up. The reason I do that is because the, these coronamids have a very distinct taper to them. They're not all flat. They do taper from the butt up to the thorax. So we'll do that. Stick it in fast motion here. Okay, now we're going to grab the red or the cranberry and just going to create a little segmentation all the way up the body. And you want four or five segments in there. So five or six wraps, give or take, up to the thorax. And then you have to also bear in mind that part of the thorax is going to be the bead. So we can go up there to about that point and tie that off.
Now I'll grab the silver tinsel. And what I like to do is just come up and try to not cover up the red. So I want the red right on the border of the silver. And we don't want a ton of black or red showing through because the silver represents the major segmentations and the black and, and red represent the smaller ones. So they're definitely not equal. So we just leave that little bit of space. Not all the red will go through and not all the, it's not gonna be all lined up, but it's gonna be pretty close. There we are. And we just trim that off. And then for the uh, wing pads, as usual, I use my medium orange holographic tinsel. couple of inches of that and what I do is I stick it on my thread fold it in half and then I'll come right up underneath and tie a couple of wraps so now that's uh, tied that in now I'll pull this over and spread the tinsel on either side of the hook like so and then I'm just gonna come back here with my fingers and grab it and then I'll work back to where I want that the thorax to begin. And kind of fill those in. So now you've got a little V where we're gonna bring those forward. And now, as I often do, I'll tie in a little flashback there. In this case, I'm gonna use the, the saltwater flashaboo, the Opal Mirage. So we'll tie that right on top right behind the bead and then work our way back to where the two wing pads are going to start. And now I'm going to come up here, cross over the bead in front of the breathers to the eye of the hook and then one wrap behind. So now I'm, the thread is now between the breathers and the bead. And I'll preen some of these fibers forward if they've kind of gotten unruly because I don't want to tie those down. Grab my uh, saltwater flashaboo here, the Mirage Opal Tinsel, and give that a tight little wrap. And then you'll grab your wing pad here with the other, and you want that uh, angled up like that. And then you're just going to come in here and catch that with your thread. And then it'll keep that nice angle and then we'll catch the near side same way we just angle it up so now we've got the bottom looking like that and we'll keep one wrap there and I'm going to pull them all back get them out of the way and then we'll just clean do a couple of clean wraps right in front of them. And then you can come in here with these pieces of tinsel. All you do is just give them a nick from your scissors and they'll tear right off. Sometimes you can get all three, but usually you want to get a little closer on the last one. And if you need to, you can come in and clean up the little uh, tag ends. Shouldn't be much. Then we'll whip finish. And now we just need to coat it with some resin. This will keep it nice and protected. Um, I love this fluorescing UV clear fly finish. You know, I've tried lacquers, I've tried uh, all sorts of things to finish, but the, for the resin to be as quick and easy as it is, it's really tough to beat. Um, it's tack free, so you're not gonna leave fingerprints on it. So now here's what I like to do. I like to tilt the fly up 
so that the resin doesn't go into those breathers. So that way, if anything's going to drip, it drips down. And then you can kind of see there's some uh, empty space in between the tinsel and the thread. That's what this will also do. And then you want to keep your light handy because we'll lay some of this on and then um, work it in. And uh, then you can zap it before it gets too crazy on you. Then we'll cure it, and I usually do two or three coats, not entire coats. I don't like to coat the, the abdomen any more than I have to, but the thorax will take a couple. And there we go. Very simple, easy tie.